Today's lesson is about circle graphs. Today you're going to learn how to construct a circle graph and take different types of data and convert that data into degrees to put them into a circle graph. Uh, you're also going to learn how to compare bar graphs to circle graphs and how to interpret the data that is in a circle graph. Let's get started. A couple key terms that you need to know first. First of all, what is a circle graph? A circle graph compares parts of a whole. So if you have a set of data where you're doing a survey and you're asking people for their favorite this or favorite that, you can put that data into a circle graph and show that this part of the people that you surveyed prefer item number A, or this amount of people prefer item number B. It's a visual way to see what is most popular and least popular and uh, so on. Uh, to do that, we're going to use ratios. We're going to compare two numbers using division. Uh, and what you remember from the ratios unit is that a fraction is a ratio. So we're going to take fractions or parts of a whole, uh, a part of a group by a total group, and turn those fractions into percents, decimals, and degrees so that we can put them into a circle graph. So here's an uh, example set of data. Um, before making our circle graph, we need this data in order to uh, find degrees, find percents, of, uh, find fractions, that kind of thing. So here, a sample set of students were asked what their favorite sport is. And the responses are below. So you can see that 20 people chose baseball, 65 football, 34 basketball, 28 hockey, and 53 soccer. You can already tell which is the most popular sport from here. But if you were asked what part of the whole chose football, as in like a percent or as a decimal or a degree amount on a circle graph, you would need to do some math to do that. But you could say 65 out of the total, but we don't even know the total yet. So we have to figure out a total and then use those numbers with the total to construct our circle graphs. Okay, so let's turn each number into percent. In order to do that, we need to figure out what the total number of respondents was. Uh, there were 200 total responses to that question that was in the table on the previous slide. Out of those 200 responses, we're going to calculate a percent for baseball first. And to do that, you use the formula that's in the box right here. All you do is take the number of responses for a particular item, here is baseball, and put that over top of the total number of responses. Here, there were 200 people asked. And you change that to a percent by doing your division problem and then multiplying by 100. Okay? So when you divide 20 divided by 200, that will actually give you the decimal uh, for that value. So 20 divided by 200 will give you 0 0.10. And when you multiply that by 100, you're going to get 10%. Luckily, you guys will have calculators to use for this unit, so uh, doing the long division should not be an issue for you. So here you can see I did 20 divided by 200 times 100, and we got 10% for baseball. Uh, take a minute, grab your calculator, uh, write down a few things if you need to, calculate the percents for each of these sports, uh, and then when you're done, hit play again on your uh, video, and you can see if you got them correct or not. Okay, what you'll notice here is that my percents are listed. Uh, football should have ended up being 32.5%, basketball 17%, hockey 14%, and soccer 26.5%. Um, I did not round these to whole numbers. These decimals, uh, if, if you noticed, if you did it correctly, they terminated or ended. So write them out completely. When we go to make our circle graph, then we'll estimate a bit, but we need exact figures that we can get them. Okay? Question. Uh, now that we've calculated all of our percents, what do you think all of these percents should add up to? If we're calculating each percent individually and then adding them up for a whole, think about what the word percent means and then try to figure out what you think the entire total of the percent should equal. Well, the answer to that is 100. Uh, the word percent means out of 100 or part of 100. Baseball is part of 100 percent. Football is part of 100 percent. Uh, all of them are part of 100%. But when you add them all together, they should equal 100%. So this is your first check to make sure that you're doing your math correctly. Once you calculate percents, you should be able to add them all together, and your percent should add up to 100. If you get something other than 100, uh, you may have done something incorrectly. If you're rounding your percents, you may end up getting 99% or 101%. Um, that's probably not an indication that you did something wrong. But again, we don't want to round unless we have to. So here, leave them exact, uh, and you should get exactly 100%. Okay? Now that you have percents, we've got to change uh, our percents and decimals that we uh, have used to calculate this into degrees 
to uh, calculate the amount of space in a circle that each uh, part of the survey will take up. So here, uh, we're going to change each percent to a decimal. And I kind of already explained what to do to make a decimal. Uh, but then you can multiply the decimal by 360, and that will give you degrees. Okay? Uh, we'll talk about why you multiply by 360 in a second. Okay, so here, if I take my 10%, uh, remember from our FDP unit that you slide the decimal point over two spaces to get 0.10. Here it would be 0 0.325, 0 0.265, 0 0.17, and 0.14. So there's our decimal values. And if we multiply those by 360, that will tell us how many degrees of a circle each sport will take up. Why do we multiply by 360? The reason we multiply by 360 is because there are 360 degrees in a complete circle. So again, we're finding part of a whole. Except this time we're finding part of a whole circle for each problem, not part of 100 or not part of a fraction. So to find part of a whole for a circle, you have to multiply by 360. So hit pause, take a second and do these math problems, write down your answers, and then see if you got the same answers that I'll show you in a minute. Okay, here are your answers. So what you'll notice is that uh, we have our degrees here. I put a degree symbol with them. I did not round uh, because these decimals terminated. If they don't terminate or repeat, then we can round, but for now, we're not going to round. Um, and one question for you now. When we added our percents up, we should have gotten 100. When we add our degrees up, what number do you think we're going to get? Well, a whole circle is 360 degrees, so if you add all five of these numbers together, you should get 360. And here we do. Okay? You can see if you add them up, you line up your decimal points, add them up. These all add up to exactly 360 degrees. So now we can construct our circle graph. Uh, most of the time you will need a compass. All of the time you will need a protractor. If uh, you are given a worksheet that has a blank circle on it with a radius, like I'm going to show you in a minute, then you do not need to use a compass because you don't have to draw a circle. But a protractor is something you always need, and we're going to explain how to use that. So here is a circle. The center of the circle is marked. The radius is marked. So we need to use our protractors to put each of these sports onto the circle graph. So here's how we get started. Um, you have to take your protractor, and you can do this now on your paper, and you can line up the center of the protractor, which is right in the middle here, with the center of the circle. Most of the protractors will have either a straight line right there or an actual hole. So line that up right in the middle, and then on the left-hand side, your radius should fall along the zero line on the protractor. So it should be lined up just like that. So when you look at the edge of the circle where the radius is, zero should be lined up with that. Okay? Uh, if your numbers all look backwards, you probably have your protractor upside down, so just flip it over. Okay? Uh, and you're going to use the numbers that go from zero. So here we're going to use 10, 20, 30, 40, and go that way. Okay? If we were drawing our circle from the other direction, then we would use the bottom numbers. We're going to use the numbers on the top, all of these ones. Okay? So let's take a look at our uh, results from our math. Our first degree measurement is 36 degrees. So once I have everything lined up, I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, and then count six more spaces. And you can see I put a dot right here at 36 degrees. So that dot is important because we're going to draw a line that connects the center to that dot. Okay? So if you take your protractor off and you use the straight edge of it, so I'll try to do this here. If you use the straight edge of the protractor and you line up the dot and the center, you can draw a straight line that looks like that. So you're kind of using the straight edge of the uh, protractor as a ruler that you can draw a line with. So you'll connect that dot to that dot. This little pie piece is baseball. So you can label that with a 36 degree, and you can write baseball in there. You could also write the fraction if you wanted to. You could write the decimal if you wanted to. You could write the percent if you wanted to. I'm writing degrees in here just to make it easy to match all the pieces up with the table we have on the right-hand side. Okay? So here's what you do next. Uh, next, you take your circle, and I'm going to try to do this here. You actually rotate it. Let me see if I can do this. You actually rotate it now. So the line you just drew is the new line that goes from uh, the center straight out horizontally to the left. And you're going to line up your protractor in the middle here 
and zero is going to line up right on this mark now. Okay, just like we did before, but with the new line. So it should look kind of like that. Okay, so again, if you look at it, uh, the line you just drew in pencil is this line right here. And it lines up with zero, just like we did the last time. Remember to make sure that your middle, uh, your cent the center of your circle is lined up with the center of the protractor. Okay, once you have it lined up correctly, you're going to count 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to the next number, which is 117. So we're going 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 115, 117 is right there. I'm going to put a dot. I'm going to take off my protractor again and use it like a ruler to draw a line that connects the center to that uh, dot that I just made. And that second piece we make should be football. So that's what it should look like. You connect your dots, you label it with football and here I'm putting 117 degrees, but you could put your fraction or your decimal or your percent in there also. Okay? And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to rotate the circle around again. See if I can do this again. We're going to rotate the circle around again so that the line you just drew goes on the left now. Now that's how we're going to line our protractor up again, with the line you just drew. Okay? So when you line your protractor up, it should line up with this line right here, that's where your zero should be. Zero should be out here, okay? And you're going to continue to do that until you have all five pieces labeled, okay? So if you want to take a minute and hit pause and do that, you can. I'll give you a minute and then hit play again, and we'll check to see how you did. Okay, so soccer should look like that, 95.4 degrees. You rotated your circle around, hopefully. Basketball should look like this, 61.2 degrees. And then hockey is the remaining piece. Always measure the remaining piece to make sure it's the accurate amount. So turn and rotate and measure for hockey. But that piece should be 50.4 degrees. Okay? Uh, as you're using the protractor, you probably notice the protractor does not have decimals on it. It only counts uh, one spaces that are holes. So if you have 95.4 degrees, you're probably okay if you just make your mark at 95. Same with basketball. Make your mark at 62. Hockey, make your mark at 50. So go to the nearest whole number. All three of these numbers rounded down. That's why I used 50, 61, and 94. Okay? So what you'll see when you're finished is you have a circle graph that represents all of the amounts that were uh, collected in your survey. Uh, you can double check to make sure it looks right. Look at the numbers. 117 is the biggest number. That should be the biggest piece in your circle graph. The smallest one is 36. That should be the smallest piece of your circle graph. Okay? So you always double check as you go along. If you end up with extra space at the end or if you don't have enough space, that means you measured something incorrectly. Go back and remeasure everything. Okay? The last thing you can do or you should do is make a key. You can see here I color coded everything. I uh, made a key where the baseball was green, football was the uh, brown color, soccer blue, basketball orange, and hockey is gray. Uh, a key is essential to your circle graph. You have to make one. Uh, if you don't make one and you don't have things labeled correct correctly, you won't know what's what. So here, I don't have football marked anymore for 117, and I don't have the um, uh, other information in here that I could use, like a fraction or a decimal or percent. So I have degrees, and I know that this is the largest pie piece, and it's 117 degrees, but if I don't have a key, I have no idea what it stands for. Okay. So um, the key should include the names of the categories that you have. And if it's not color-coded, you need to find a different way to match them up. So either with like writing the percent in here and putting the percent in the circle graph as well. Okay? If I wrote 36 degrees here, that would be okay. Color-coding it is always the best way to do it, though. Okay? So that was, that's how you construct a circle graph. Uh, hopefully the one that you did along with this, these notes turned out like the one that you see here. If it did not... Uh, you can ask for help. You can try to redo it on your own. Uh, and uh, we'll be doing several circle graphs in class, so hopefully the more you do it, the easier it'll get. I uh, hope this video was helpful. Uh, go back and rewatch if you need to. And all, as always, use for homework, quizzes, and other things. I'll talk to you next time.